friends I'm outside today doing an unboxing because Nikki's laid up in the house uh, watching some TV and didn't want me to bother her. Well, she didn't say that, but I knew she didn't. This is a huge box that a Grote guitar has come in. This is, this is, I just wanted you to see how huge it is. I've never seen one come in a box this big. So this is the, the Grote uh, Thin Line Telecaster. And I hope it is. I hope it's the one I ordered. I just wanted to see how big this box is. I'll, I'll make this quick. I'm, uh oh, it looks like it's looks like it's open. That's kind of a bad sign. It, it's in your kind of candy corner, strange way. Let's see that. Kind of odd way to be packed, isn't it? Hopefully, it's okay. <laughs> it's actually very light. It's a huge box. This seems to be substantial, right? That is just crazy, man. That's a lot of paper. Anyhow, so this came a day early. It was supposed to come on Monday. It's a Sunday now. This is how it looks very nondescript. I don't see a, oh, here we go. Here's some, some stuff on it. It is definitely out of China. Shandong Changle. Shandong Changle, S H A N D O N G dash C H A N G L E, two six two four zero nine. I'll be darned. And uh, Amazon.com Services is who bought it to us, two twenty five Infinity Drive, Northwest Charleston, Tennessee. But it shipped out of uh, out of like Phoenix or some place out of Arizona. Uh, I checked and followed it online as it, as it traveled through, so it came out of Arizona. Let's open it up and take a look. This is the $99, $99 thin line Telecaster from Grote. So far, the Grotes I've bought have been like an ES-335 copy and also a uh, oh, another ES-335 copy, one with P90s, one with not. Both of them very fine guitars in my estimation. I like both of them. This has a very kind of interlocked uh, box on it here. I left my knife in the house. I'm using a chisel to open it. Let's see how this thing looks. Huh. Right back. Here it is in the plastic. And here's the little stuff that comes with it. I'll go over to this camera. That's the uh, the cord, a pick, a couple picks. No strap in this one that I can tell. It does have the uh, tools to do the, the adjustment on the truss rod. Okay, so let's take this stuff off. It's kind of odd doing this outside, but I kind of dig it too at the same time. The light may be better. Okay. This guitar was five star rated on Amazon. And it's not available right now. I got one of the last ones in the, in the batch that we're dealing with right now. There may be a new batch coming soon. I can already tell it's pretty. Wow. Friends, that's it right there. That is a handsome little guitar. It's very lightweight. I'll go weigh it in just a minute and we'll see how much it weighs. The things I really liked about this was this thing here. I like the fact that we have the curve here and we also have a little cutaway there for easy top access. And it looks like it is highly accessible. The strings immediately to me look to be a little bit high. This is going to require a setup. The neck is straight as an arrow. I'm just looking at it. It's a very straight neck. This looks like it might be set up just a little bit high. And uh, but check it out. Check out the uh, check out the neck. Very nice neck. It says Super Series 2019 GT150. GT150 is what this is. I'll already tell you. The wood on top of it seems thinner than what the Glary is. The Glary's, good gosh, it's probably a quarter inch thick. This is at best maybe. Man, you can see it's not very thick at all. This this wood on top. I can see a piece of paper down in there. I might get some tweezers and get it out. There's a piece of paper back up in here. 
I don't know if it's like a, if it's a guarantee or what it is. It has some music notes on it. But that's how the back of it looks. That's how the front of it looks. Quite a nice guitar. Put over here on this camera as well. Here's how the back looks. It's interesting how this uh, this horn here is a little different than on a regular Telecaster, isn't it? It's a little bit sharpened off there. It feels very lightweight. The, the, the knobs are real smooth, real smooth. Three-way, a little bit, little bit. Uh, it's not greedy or anything. It's just stiff. Might take a while for that to work out. Saddles look adequate. String through, which is cool. I really, uh, the neck feels great. Satiny neck. The, the neck feels better than uh, the Glary's. It's like it's finished better. I can tell it's like, there's this uh, maple, and it's got a maple fretboard on top of it here. I don't know if you can see the line. And uh, as far as fret sprout, a little bit. I can feel a tiny bit of it. So we're, we're a little bit sharp on the, uh, just a little bit sharp on the frets. So I'll probably have to do a little bit of fret filing, I would imagine. Uh, I'm not even going to see if it's in tune yet. I know it's probably not. It couldn't be coming all the way from China. Well, let's check. No, definitely not. <laughs> I like the pick guard on it. It's it's not coated with, it's like there's a piece of plastic here on this first, this one pick up here. I'll take that off. There we go. So the pick guard looks even better than, than what I'm showing you. Let's take that off. So that's, that's how it looks with the plastic off of the pit guard. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. I didn't do a great job getting that plastic off here. I've still got a little bit, a little bit around the knobs. I might need to take those knobs off and get the plastic out really the right way. I always hate having to do that. But there you go, friends. Very pretty guitar and very light. They do have, of course, these blue pieces of plastic on the back. I don't know why they put those things on there. I don't know what the blue signifies, unless it's uh, it shows a certain grade of uh, of tuner, maybe. Maybe it's a way that they uh, identify the tuners or something. So there's the headstock without the blue on the back of them. Got a piece of styrofoam on there. Mine is GC162020022. It says Groat since 1989. So Groat's been around a while. Cool. Very cool. Looks like definitely a plastic nut. That's probably the the worst looking part of it is probably that nut. And these little uh, bridge saddles, I don't know what kind of little chrome metal that is. Uh, they look a little cheesy, but, but still not bad. I've, I've seen worse. Overall, that's pretty. Don't see any flaws on the neck or anything. I'm pretty happy with the look of it. Let's go in, plug it up, and see what $99 gets you. Here to tell you right quick, it's a fine looking little guitar. So here's the Glary thin line. It weighs 5.6 pounds. Here's the Groat at 6.8 pounds. And so up inside that hole, apparently it did not stick when they put it in there, is the uh, this thing, which I'm going to, I guess, try to put back in there. And, and the glue just didn't stick well. But there's my serial number. So friends, I'm in the studio with the guitar, the Groat, and let me back this mic off a little bit so we can see, maybe see it better. It's beautiful, and I love the binding and everything on it. It took me about, I'm gonna guess between 30 and 40 minutes to get the uh, intonation right. So I worked on the intonation, the string height, string height first. It, it was about probably a millimeter to 1.25 millimeters higher than I like for it to be. So what I've done is I've, I've lowered the strings to a point where where they started to buzz and I brought them back up just a little bit. So 
It's about as low as it can get. And the intonation seems good. Nice. This is the this is the neck pickup, the neck pickup we're listening to. Let's try turning the tone down and see what happens. Actually, it's a volume. Huh. I guess you can hear that the tones. I can hear, if you hear a little bit of squeaking, it's the plastic where I pulled the plastic off. I didn't take the knobs off and there's a little bit of plastic still stuck in there and it's what's squeaking. It's not the guitar. So that's uh, the neck pickup with nothing. Uh, all it has on it, I, in other words, I'm going straight into the board. No EQ, everything's EQ'd straight up. I am using some spring reverb on my Hall of Fame Reverb 2. So I've got a little bit of reverb. Let's uh, apply Strymon Iridium. I think I've got a Marshall uh, set up here in one of their... <laughs> Sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? show you how it compares like maybe to uh, one of the Glary's. Now the Glary that I have over here has a humbucker pickup on it so it's going to sound different in the neck. So even though it's a thin line and this other one here is not, I thought maybe I'd play you the sound of how this one sounds so you can kind of compare. So there you've got the sound of what you're getting with the Grote. I'll unplug and put the other one on. So here again, solid body versus uh, uh, so that's how, how the groats, or excuse me, how the uh, glary sounds with the lipstick type pickup like you get on a Telecaster. show what the back pickup or the uh, bridge pickup sounds like on this one. A lot more, uh, a lot more output on that. Let's switch back over to the Groat. So the reason I showed you that uh, Glary initially is because it does have a lipstick type pickup, but also because it's also sort of the same price. This one with tax was 109 bucks or something like that, $99 to buy it. <laughs> So here is the bridge pickup on this one. So you see they're very similar in sound. Let's go into the in-between position. There's my dog going crazy. showing you that it's playable all over the neck. $99 guitar. Let's hit a little bit of distortion on it. Let's go to the neck, neck position. screamer bridge position let's chat let's uh go against the uh glary uh thin line thin line that's what it sounds like so here we are the bridge 
back to uh, some regular sounds. Larry Thin Line. I just like the sound of the Glary. Here's some distortion on the Glary. Here is some uh, tube screamer on the Glary. the uh, neck pickup is going to sound totally different since it's a humbucker. Here's without the uh, tube screamer. So this guitar is about $30 more. It came with a gig bag. Um, humbucker pickup. It does not have binding. It is lighter weight. Uh, both of them are handsome guitars. I gotta say, uh, I mean, they're both beautiful. This one's a little heavier. Does have the binding on it, the white binding on top. Does have the cool cutaway back here uh, in the back where my pinkies. <laughs> I like this this contour. Uh, I like I like maple necks, but I gotta say I, I have enjoyed this kind of rosewood or whatever it is. I have no idea what kind of wood that is. I, I probably said it in my other in my other uh, review. Both of them still have the original strings on it. I have to say there might be better quality strings on the Glary than on the uh, the Grote. But let's go back to the Grote for a minute since this really is about the Grote. I just wanted you to see and hear what the differences were, so you can see that they're they're actually very comparable kind of guitars. One thing I'll say is. <laughs> Tuners seem to be working really well. The strings are still getting kind of acclimated. Let's double check the tune again. Most people that have been reviewing this have said, you know, that they like the pickups in it and they probably wouldn't change them. And uh, maybe so. I mean, I'm not going to probably. It's pretty telecaster -y, isn't it? Pretty sweet. Back to the neck pickup again. Still a little bit of spank. Maybe not as high output as the ones on the uh, on the Glary. I don't know. a nice sound. Let's go to a Fender sound on the uh, on the Iridium. If I just change the uh... so this might be how you sound sort of through a Fender amp. Here's the neck again. Thank you. 
switching over to the uh, Vox sound on the Iridium. We'll do a Vox tone. <laughs> I just wanted to open it up and play it and give you my first impressions. Uh, usually I don't really do a full review on a guitar like this until I've had it for about a week or something like that, or at least three or four days. Uh, overall, real quickly, I'll say this. After, uh, after a good bit of, just a little bit of setup, uh, if you know what you're doing about setting your intonation, setting your string height, uh, I think you'll be really satisfied with it if you get one like I got. Uh, this was not given to me free. I did buy it. Just a teeny tiny bit of relief on the neck. It's pretty straight neck. Uh, fret work seems really good, really good, except that it is tiny, tiny little, tiny little bit of edge there. So I'll probably get my little fret uh, file and I'll file these frets off a little bit. Did that? They felt a little greedy when I was out and opening and unboxing it, but as I've stretched around on the string, I'm not getting any of that. I think it just needed to be played and broke in a little bit. Tuners stay in tune pretty darn well. I mean, I've just done minor adjustments. It's very playable, very comfortable feeling guitar. I've not strapped it around my neck and stood up with it. But at the weight that it weighs, uh, it's not very heavy. It's not going to be hard on your body to play it. Uh, I've not done the uh, tone on the back. There you can see. Again, all that squeaking is plastic that's up under that. I gotta get that plastic off of there. I hate yanking knobs off. There we go. <laughs> it wasn't a bad, wasn't a big deal like I thought it would be. Okay, here, let's pull this off. It came off really easily. So here's what's causing that squeaking. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can get it back on the right way. I hate taking a knob off and messing something up. There we go. That's what we want. So the, the knobs are great. I've never been really adept at doing this thing. I watch people like Greg Cock do it, you know, out there do the volume swells. I've always done it with a foot pedal. Just because I, I saw Alex Lifeson do it with foot pedals. Right there. The real country pickers can reach back there and they'll do that thing. I don't do it. It's a real good chicken picking kind of sound. sounding guitar man I'm still in the uh, uh, Vox sound now, now I'm here again playing through expensive iridium let me here's the that's the regular guitar with just a little bit of spring reverb let me uh, do an AC tone here a $40 pedal if you can get Here's the neck pickup or a bridge pickup. I'm gonna do uh, my AC or my uh, Joyo or Joyo American so you can hear how that's gonna sound. 
I may have the drive set a little bit high. Crank the drive back a little. Neck pick up. don't have to have a super fancy uh, amp simulator or anything to get a decent sound to either. Man. You could buy a $99 guitar and a $40 pedal and go direct into your board with any sort of reverb. You're going to sound pretty nice. So going forward, I'll do some demos with this thing through some amps so you can hear how it sounds in a room and run through an amp. So this is my first impression. My first impression is for 99 bucks, you can't go wrong with this baby. I don't see a cosmetic thing wrong with it. Just took a little bit of setup. Tuners are performing better than I thought. Pickups sounding pretty darn decent. Um, sweet. What's not to like about that? Peace to all who watch. Subscribe to the channel if you like. <laughs>